Hi, this is Jeffine. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. So let's get TensorFlow installed on a Mac M1. This is one of the options that you can use for this course. If you don't want to go through a lot of installation to get access to a GPU, you can also use Google Colab, and I've got videos discussing this. But in this video, we're going to make use of the GPU built into an M1 Mac or an M2, M1 Max. This is an M1 Mac that I am presently using, but it should work the same on the higher models. So we're going to go ahead for the first thing and look at the installation instructions that I have here. I'll have a link to this notebook page in the description of this video. We're going to make use of a full Conda environment to do this. We're going to make use of Miniconda, and this basically is going to allow you to not have to use Miniforge, which is how we did this in the past. This lets us just use one environment across. We're going to install the ARM64 version of Python. If you don't install the ARM64 version, if you get the x86 version, this won't work at all. And I'll show you how to double check this at each step. So let's first just go to a command prompt. Now you can see that I have Python already installed here. You can see by the fact that I have base. If I do Python, my spice version, you can see there's already a Python installed there. I'm going to go heavy handed. I'm going to yank the entire Python version that I have out. You might want to skip this step. That's totally up, up to you. But if you're running into a lot of problems, this might not be a bad idea. But just with the disclaimer, you're removing the Python that you had in there before, and you may or may not want to, to do that. This is how you remove a previous installation of Anaconda. So remove Anaconda. They have a nice description of how to do this. I've gone through this a couple of times, and it works really pretty well. I'm going to copy this line here. It installs a package that removes a lot of the junk that Anaconda installs in various uh, locations. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. We're going to run that, and it's, it's there. So now we're just going to do Anaconda clean, just like they have right here. And it asks you yes or no on a few things, and it, it removes it. Then we'll go down to Mac. They want you to run these three remove commands. Now, we're doing this completely from Miniconda. Miniconda is what I installed before. So if you look in opt, which is where this usually is, I have Miniconda, and this is opt underneath my user directory. So I could run these commands. They're just nuking it at every possible location that it could be. I'm just going to do essentially the equivalent and throw my opt folder completely away. What could possibly go wrong? Now, if there's more than just that uh, in your opt folder, obviously don't throw your entire opt folder away. So now we're going to close this, open up a new one, and there's no Python. So I'm going to install Miniconda. I like Miniconda. I like controlling what's in my environment rather than having everything in the kitchen sink installed. You may, if, if you're more entry level, you may want to have everything in the kitchen sink installed. So no shame there at all if you want to install Anaconda instead of Miniconda. But I'm going to do Miniconda download, and you'll see it here. Download this one. Absolutely download this one. This is where so many people mess up. I did a whole video just on this. If you install this one, the x86, it'll work. Your Mac M1 is smart enough that it'll just flip into Rosetta and it will emulate and run the Intel chip. So we're going to download this one. And if you don't do this, you're going to not find packages when you go to Conda install them. TensorFlow Depths will be the one that you first see on that. So we're pulling this down. I'm going to go ahead and run it. This is where people in YouTube in my comments tell me I followed every, every single step that you told me to. And usually one of the most common ones is you click that link instead of that link. 
So let's go ahead and continue. I agree. Go ahead and install. This takes a moment. If you're doing the full-blown Anaconda, this will take much longer because it has to install everything and the kitchen sink. We're just installing the kitchen sink here. Okay, it wants to access my downloads folder. That's acceptable. And we're done. Sure, let's move it to the trash. So now if we open, open a new one of these and we do Python, we're now in 3.9.12, 3 uh, released in April 5th, 2022, at least at this point when I recorded it. Do this, import platform, platform dot platform. You better see ARM64 here. If you don't see ARM64, and you're using a Python that you already installed, go back to the first step, uninstall Python, put a new one on here. This just will cause you all kinds of trouble if you're trying to get the M1 chip to actually work. You can't have Rosetta running the Intel code and then use the Mac GPU as well. Just, just not gonna happen. Okay, so back over to my instructions. I said to install, I need to fix that. That's install. Miniconda, not Miniforge. We used to use Miniforge, so that's top on my to-do list. By the time you read this, it'll be, it'll be updated. So we're going to install this. This gives you get and other utilities. I already have it installed, so it's gonna, it's gonna tell me already installed. But if this was not installed, it would, it would go through the whole, the whole nine yards for you there. I've never seen a problem installing this. Then we're going to install Jupyter. That is the main IDE or editor that you're using for this course. This takes a moment. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this. Okay, that's done. We now have Jupyter. I'm going to do Conda Deactivate. I have not ever found this to make a difference, but people on my previous YouTube comments have sworn by this. So we'll Conda Deactivate. Notice the base environment goes away. And now we need to move to the directory that has this TensorFlow Apple Metal Conda. So you'll want to download the course material that I have. So to do that, you would go to here and you'd go to code and you would download the zip if you want everything. If you just want that YAML file, it's, and this is the YAML file. The important things here are these channels. If you don't have the channels right, it's not going to find things like TensorFlow Depths, and that's, that's the one that will usually give you the, the issue. And if you are not in an ARM64 environment, also not going to find it. Believe me, that is probably one of the most common errors that people run into. So you could just get this file raw, save it somewhere, and, uh, and, and run it from that. I already have my entire class downloaded, so I'm just going to go into, and there you can, you can see it. So we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and run this command. This does a lot. This installs the whole thing and all the additional packages that you need for my course. And it creates it all in an environment called TensorFlow. So you'll always activate that environment to, to make use of the course material. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this. This takes a while. And this is where if something is going to go wrong, it'll usually go wrong. Do post errors that you get doing this in the YouTube comments. I do watch those and I often investigate. Just believe me, this stuff shifts over time and I have to make I have to make changes to my installation instructions often as a result. So that's, that's usually my first radar to let me know that something has changed is what you're posting in the comments. I get a lot of requests for me to work one-on-one -on -one with people to help them install. Unfortunately, I, I barely have the time to, to even teach a course in addition to, um, to working and to leading a data science team as my day job. We'll go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this. Okay, it's installed, nothing went wrong. And that does that. So now we've got TensorFlow there, so that's good. And we need to register our environment. This is so that it shows up as a kernel when you run Jupyter. Otherwise, you're not gonna see it on the list of supported environments. So we'll go ahead and run that. 
that takes a moment and is done. And now we're going to test it. I'm going to open this file that I was viewing in GitHub here that we are running the instructions from. I'm going to do Jupyter Notebook. This is the file that we were just following all the instructions from. And I'm going to run this section right here. Before I do that, though, let's make sure that kernel, change kernel, you want to make sure you're in Python 3.9 TensorFlow. That's the one that we just created. If you don't see it on the list, make sure you ran that last command that I gave you that, that registers that environment. So let's run this. It takes a moment for it to load everything up. All right, good news. GPU is available. That's what you want to see. I print this here. You should be in ARM64. If you're not, you'll have a problem. But this is it. You're now ready for the course. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe if you want to follow along with additional material as I edit for the course, or things beyond the course where I get into some of the more advanced topics with machine learning and artificial intelligence. And if this video was helpful for you, please give me a like. Thank you.